New York City's finally undergoing a massive architectural revolution. New York has always been world famous for its iconic skyline, which includes art decos like the Chrysler Building and Empire State Building, and revolutionary designs like the World Trade Center. While all these structures have their place in history, a new generation of skyscrapers is threatening to overshadow them in the not-so-distant future. Here are six skyscrapers that'll completely transform the look and feel of NY. Number 1. 270 Park Avenue It's a 1,388-foot-tall skyscraper under construction in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. This state-of-the-art building will serve as the new headquarters of J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the U.S. 270 Park Avenue will replace the old HQ Union Carbide building that served as the company's headquarters since the 1980s. In 2018, it was announced that the former Union Carbide building would be demolished to build a tower twice as tall. The new building will span up to 60 stories and will provide space for 14,000 employees. It's designed by Foster Plus Partners, the firm behind legendary structures like the Hearst Tower, Lennon City Hall, and Apple Park. There are 24 massive columns at the base, which will support a lobby measuring about 80 feet high. The lifted base will create more outdoor space on the ground level on Park and Madison Avenues, which the studio plans to complement with a public plaza and green spaces. To secure approvals for the tower, the New York City Council dictated J.P. Morgan to spend $40 million for improving the district's condition and building a 10,000-square-foot public plaza in front of the tower. This will give Park and Madison Avenues two and a half times as much ground-level outdoor space. It'll include enlarged walkways equipped with natural vegetation and services for neighborhood residents, workers, and regular guests. Talking about the overall design, the tower consists of several vertical columns of differing lengths pressed together to form a step structure. The interior will feature two and a half million square feet of working space along with a food hall, a penthouse conference center, and a fitness center. All this will come at a hefty price tag of $3 billion. The outstanding thing about this building is that it's going to run entirely on hydroelectricity. This makes it the biggest all-electric tower in New York, combined with the fact that it'll have zero net emissions. Foster Plus Partners claimed that 97% of the building materials were recycled during construction. Over three years, more than 93,600 tons of U.S.-made and fabricated steel, 93% of which is recycled. The old building was demolished between 2019 and 2022, making it the tallest building to be voluntarily demolished. The previous record was held by the Singer Building, one of the earliest skyscrapers in Manhattan that was later demolished in 1968. To build such a large building, J.P. Morgan had to purchase hundreds of thousands of square feet of air rights from the nearby St. Bart's Church and MSD Capitol. Initially, 270 Avenue was supposed to be even taller, with a planned height of 1,400 feet. However, such a length requires deeper foundations that could interfere with the Grand Central Terminal that's directly beneath the tower and the east side access tunnels. By late September 2023, construction had reached the fourth of the five tiers. The steel skeleton of the tower is complete and the last beam was placed in November 2023. The whole project slated for completion in 2025. Until the tower is finished, J.P. Morgan and its employees are using 383 Madison Avenue as temporary office space. During the building period alone, the project will create more than 8,000 construction jobs across 40 local unions. The tower's construction injected $2.6 billion into New York City's economy. However, the design of the new headquarters is not without its share of criticism, particularly about its base columns. Architectural critic Alexandra Lang described the building as a son of Hearst Tower grafted on top of creepy legs, while others drew comparisons between the base columns to that of the ballerina's toes. But that's just their opinion, isn't it? We'd love to hear yours in the comments section. If you've liked this video so far and want to see more similar content, kindly hit the subscribe button. After all, it's free and you'll be getting two new videos each week. That's a win-win. We've also dropped some exciting merch for you, which you can purchase through the link in our description. Let's go back to our topic. Number 2. Commodore Tower on 175 Park Avenue This tower's design is limited to paper only, but if realized, it can be the third tallest building in New York City after the World Trade Center and Affirmation Tower. Towering up to 1,575 feet, 175 Park Avenue will be a super tall neighbor of the Grand Central Terminal. It's intended to replace the Grand Hyatt Hotel owned by former President Donald Trump. The 26-story Grand Hyatt is 290 feet tall, but its successor will be grander, offering 2.2 million square feet of space for office a new 500-room hotel, retail, and 25,000 square feet of publicly accessible terraces. 
As far as the design is concerned, it'll have a tapered shape that'll be set back in four tiers. This tapered design is a nod to the old skyscrapers in New York, and it'll allow more light to reach the street. Glass and steel columns will run parallel on the outer skin of the tower, encasing its stone-clad core. At the base and the very top, these same columns will crisscross each other to form a beautiful lattice pattern. The elevated public plaza along the eastern side of the property can be accessed by an outdoor staircase along East 42nd Street. The main lobby will feature a soaring atrium guarded by the triangular glass facade, allowing unobstructed views of Lexington Avenue and East 42nd Street. Notice how the huge steel framework over the lobby resembles a giant metallic hand trying to swallow the building. Proposed by Skidmore Owings & Merrill, or SOM, the new tower is set to solve the congestion on the pavement and build a clear path between 175 Park Avenue and the nearby Grand Central Terminal. In return for building this behemoth, the developers will spend hundreds of millions of dollars on new transportation infrastructure, including improvements to Grand Central Terminal, a new subway entrance on 42nd Street, and other public realm improvements. An additional $5 million would be set aside for local nonprofit organizations and promoting art in the area. 175 Park Avenue will be located adjacent to the iconic Chrysler Building, which will no doubt be overwhelmed by the scale of the new skyscraper. The Chrysler's building is just over a thousand feet tall and gracefully reminiscent of New York's past. While the silhouette of both buildings is similar, the Chrysler Building's slim and needle-like proportions give it an air of elegance unknown to the new generation of skyscrapers. To be fair to the new skyscrapers, they're made bulky as the prospective tenants demand larger floor plans to accommodate office, retail, and wellness facilities. Not to mention that New York remains the blue-eyed boy for many startups, businesses, and talented professionals. So the demand for spacious and cutting-edge high-rise developments isn't going away anytime soon. Moreover, the 2017 Midtown East Zoning Initiative also encouraged bulky structures like the one Vanderbilt, 270 Park Avenue, which we just discussed, and the future 350 Park Avenue to come into existence. For the tower to truly absorb its surroundings, it'll incorporate elements from its surroundings. For example, the skyscraper's use of stone and visual symmetry echoes the vibe of the Grand Central Terminal Station. One of the challenges of this mega project is that it sits directly over some of the subway lines of the Grand Central Station. That's why the demolition process has to be carried out carefully, in addition to improving the layout of the underground train station. Three new public terraces offering seating, food, and drink options will be built around the skyscraper, accessed via staircases and escalators. One of them, called the Chrysler Terrace, will allow visitors to have Instagram-worthy pictures of the vintage Chrysler building. The developers RXR Realty and TF Cornerstone acquired the site in 2019. In late 2021, the project gained approval from the New York City Council. However, the initial height of 1,642 feet has slashed to the current 1,575 feet. Nevertheless, it's still enough to surpass Central Park Tower in New York. It's expected the construction will commence in 2026 and will be completed by either 2029 or 2030. Number 3. Tower 5th This is another proposed tower at Midtown Manhattan. The developer Harry Macklow first revealed plans for this 1,556-foot tall tower in 2019. This means that it'll only be a few feet shorter than 175 Park Avenue, crowning it as the fourth tallest building in New York. Its proposed location is directly north of St. Patrick Cathedral, wedged between Madison Avenue and Fifth Avenue. Gensler is the design architect for the building. Harry Macklow finalized the $44 million purchase of this particular site in 2019. The tower will enclose 960,000 square feet of office space, as well as shops, a food hall, and an auditorium. At the top of the tower, the city's highest observatory will offer unprecedented views, as well as unique experimental, cultural, and entertainment experiences. On the ground floor, there will be an 85-foot lobby that will secure the life-size view of St. Patrick's Cathedral. There's nothing out of the ordinary about the outside appearance of the tower except the narrow pedestal on which it stands. The pedestal rises nearly 400 feet above the street, higher than the spires in the nearby cathedral. The very top of the skyscraper reminds us of the wooden Jenga tower. What do you think it resembles? Give your opinion in the comments. Okay, so the reason it looks like this is it'll have a sky lobby on the 40th floor. Its observation deck, called the Sky of the Americas, will sit 1,451 feet high, making it the highest such attraction in the United States and the second highest in North America. Each floor offers 19,800 gross square feet of space without any column and a line of windows, much like the fenestration of 432 Park Avenue. A restaurant sandwich between the upper blocks will be encased by floor-to-ceiling glass. Imagine eating your lunch at such a height with a whole skyline in New York in front of you. A nerve-wracking experience for sure. Other features include a retail and food market in the cellar levels, an atrium that spans the whole height, expansive seating areas, 
and a three-story auditorium. The tower itself will be wrapped in an energy-efficient closed-cavity facade system to reduce solar heat gain by over 70%. It'll be the first deployment of this type of system in North America. The next part isn't for the faint-hearted. There will be a protruding glass plate, almost like the Skywalk at Grand Canyon. Two small buildings, one of them being the Venezuelan consulate, will be demolished to free up space for the tower. But let's keep in mind, securing approval for this mega project would be a lengthy struggle. Its proximity to five landmark buildings, including Rockefeller Center and St. Patrick's Cathedral, will bring Maclow's project into clash with the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Additionally, if the project is to go forward, Maclow would have to transfer air rights from St. Patrick's. Since Tower 5th is planned to be 66% larger than current zoning allows, Maclow will require special permits, zoning approvals, and zoning changes to execute the project. If the project gets the green light, it'll no doubt refine the skyline of the city. Number 4. 15 Penn Plaza this is a planned office tower to be constructed by Vornado Realty Trust on 7th Avenue between 32nd and 33rd Streets in Midtown Manhattan. It'll be a 57-story skyscraper, reaching up to an incredible length of 1,270 feet. Designed by Foster Plus Partners, it'll yield 2.7 million square feet of office space and stand as the centerpiece of the 7.4 million square foot Penn District Master Plan. This redevelopment aims to transform and revitalize the area between 6th and 7th Avenues in West 32nd and West 34th Streets with a total of eight new buildings. In a nutshell, the overall appearance of the tower makes it look like a chest of drawers. But if you start to look closer, that's truly where you could admire its grandeur. The latest renderings show nine cantilevering volumes topped with landscaped terraces on the western elevation. The northern face is lined with steel beams and metal paneling with three vertical window columns. The rendering also showcases the tower's relative height to that of the Empire State Building. 15 Penn's top tenants have the advantage of a 360-degree view of Lower Manhattan's skyline in New York Harbor. The lobby's futuristic design fits a skyscraper of the 21st century. The lobby's high ceiling is enclosed by an equally tall glass frame overlooking the street. It looks even more majestic at night as the light from the inside shines on the outside pavement. The main lobby is as spacious as a shopping mall with four escalators to facilitate people's movement. The updated design shows a different version of the tower's crown. The old design consists of an extension covered with horizontal metal grills. The new version replaces glass with metal, so you'll see rectangular glass boxes stacked on top of each other. The extensive use of glass gives a very sophisticated energy to Pen15 and makes it appear lighter and hence less bulky. Pen 15 will be divided into five tiers that encompass several office floors that would be serviced by its own set of express elevators. The highest office level will be 1,165 feet high on the 61st level. A total of 27 landscape terraces will be found on varying heights on the building's spine. It almost looks like a vertical farm from afar. In that way, it stands out from the rest of the monolithic structures dominating the region. While the project seems great, there is only one bad outcome. To build this 1,270-foot tower, Hotel Pennsylvania had to be raised to the ground. The demolition of this century-old hotel is almost complete. During its heyday, Hotel Pennsylvania was once one of the largest hotels in the world with 2,200 furnished rooms. The hotels hosted top-notch celebrities and politicians of its time like Fidel Castro and Duke Ellington. Bornado Realty Trust brought the hotel back in 1990 and in 2008 it was given the status of a landmark. After fierce and unsuccessful preservation battles, the 22-story hotel was finally demolished in July 2023. Construction of the tower is postponed as of now, and Vernado is considering using the site of fashion shows or other temporary use. The tower's construction has also been postponed in the past due to low office market rents. Undoubtedly, this has made some people angry who were against the demolition of the historic hotel. To be fair, it appears to them it was destroyed to build a commercial tower whose plan still hangs in the air. If construction goes ahead, PEB 15 would cost a whopping $1.3 billion, or even possibly more depending on how much it gets delayed. Number 5. Affirmation Tower This tower comprises of five rectangular boxes that grow in size as they climb upward to its 1,663-foot mark. Given its upside-down step design, it gives the illusion that it might tip over on a windy day. Designed by award-winning architect Sir David Adagé, his designs tend to incorporate bizarre shapes into a neat and sleek design. If approved, Affirmation Tower would be built on Site K, one block from the High Line, Hudson Yards, and New York City's number 7 subway line. But the thing that sets it apart from others is that it would be New York's first mixed-use building developed, built and funded by black and female-owned businesses. 
The project's partners agreed that they'd give more than 30% of construction work to minority and female contractors, totaling more than a billion dollars. The Affirmation Tower is expected to hire more than 30,000 New Yorkers over six years, including 15,000 permanent jobs, bringing in more than $5 billion in new tax revenue for the city and state over 30 years. The tower will feature almost every amenity that a modern high-rise would have. An entertainment complex, a rooftop eatery, two hotels, a ballroom, an observation deck, and guess what? Even a skating rink. It'll house quite a few commercial businesses, making Affirmation a destiny for hospitality, retail, and commercial business. Affirmation Tower was shaping up to be the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere, but the architect and developer held back for one specific reason. Out of respect for the people who lost their lives in the 9-11 attacks, Affirmation Tower was made slightly shorter by spire height than One World Trade Center. Let's examine the exterior more closely. The tower goes 90 stories up with white vertical fins spanning each of the five boxes. Behind these fins, there's a floor-to-ceiling glass wall separating the building from the outside environment. Upon closer inspection, you'll see that the top three units are equipped with landscape terraces. The rooftops also enhanced by adding lush vegetation and closed by the extension of the white fins. The ice skating rink would be available in the winter months. Here, residents and non-residents can skate their way along with bonus views of the Hudson Yards. The main entrance also shows the same parallel line pattern consistent with the rest of the tower's body. It'll be positioned along 11th Avenue while a separate entrance for the observatory will be located on the other side of the ground floor while a separate entrance for the observatory will be located on another side of the ground floor. The Affirmation Tower would be a $3.5 billion addition to Hudson Yards skyline. Number 6. 525th Avenue We had purposefully left the most glamorous skyscraper for the last. 525th Avenue is also a mixed-use building under construction in Midtown Manhattan. It may not be the tallest out of all the structures that we discussed, yet it still has a decent height of 1,000 feet. The 76-story structure will span 415,000 square feet and yield 98 condominium units in commercial space spread across the ground floor and four cellar levels. Its design is unique from the grid window pattern seen in most tall buildings. The tower will feature arched windows repeating along the entire length of the tower. The front view sketches show landscape terraces at varying heights along the facade. The ground floor entrance plays with the same details of arch columns and the building's address is shown embedded into the sidewalk in interlocking numerals at the foot of the main doors. The arch details of the exterior wall were inspired by the New York Public Library and Grand Central Terminal. The site of the skyscraper was formerly occupied by three buildings, 516 and 518 Fifth Avenue and an office building at the 525th Avenue address. Not to mention that this tower is going to be very close neighbors with the Empire State Building and the World Trade Center to the south. The building's efficiently sized layouts will have retail and dining establishments on near and street level, offices on floors 5 to 28, and residences on floors 31 to 69. There will be no more than four residences per floor, and some of them will have open-air terraces. Many residents can enjoy views of Rockefeller Center, St. Patrick's Cathedral, the Chrysler Building, and the United Nations Secretariat Building. For the amenity package, there will be a swimming pool, spa, fitness center, and a restaurant. The development firm behind this project, Rabina, closed on a $540 million construction package to complete 525th Avenue. Recent photographs show the skyscraper nearing the one-third mark, followed closely behind by the installation of its facade. 525th Avenue's completion date is posted on the construction board for June 1, 2026. That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed our video. Which is the best tower in your opinion? Comment your thoughts below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.